Hello, and a big warm welcome to the Internet of Things Made Simple. I'm Letterable Humor. This is both mini episode 27 and a bonus fifth episode to our four part series on the smart home. Thanks for joining us. Big shout out as always to our new listeners. We're continuing our march towards expanding the knowledge of the general public about IoT. Welcome aboard. Check out our webpage, the Internet of Things Made Simple.com, which has some phenomenal and incredible material on IoT. That's just me saying so, but maybe you'll find it that way as well. It also has links to podcasts, blogs, and ebooks. And as always, I ask two things. Kindly subscribe to this podcast using your favorite podcast service. We're on a few dozen, so take your pick. And if that same podcast service allows you to leave a comment or a review, kindly do so. Just to recap the first four parts of our series, we covered topics ranging from how smart home is enabling those with disabilities and the elderly to live at home longer. We covered a bit of a tutorial on some of the categories of smart home devices. We added some great information about smart assistants. Think Alexa, Google Home, Siri. And last episode, we covered some security and privacy issues you need to be aware of. Now, that was supposed to be it. But as I mentioned previously, we decided to add on a bit of a tutorial about smart-enabled devices. We're going to talk about all the manufacturers here, mainly Amazon, Apple, and Google, but a couple other ones as well. And we're going to put them into different categories. We're going to talk about entry-level devices, you know, the low-end kind, the ones with LCD screens, and then those with more enhanced sound built in. No matter what part of the world you're in, which one of the companies you deal with, this should still apply. We're going to talk about the appeal of each level of devices, some of the key applications they might be ideal for, and whom and where you may wish to buy one of these for. Now let's move on to the first level of devices. These are the entry level devices. Two common examples here are the Echo Dot for those who are Amazonally inclined and the Google Home Mini for those in the Google camp. Both have posted MSRPs of around $50 US, but they can often be found as low as half that price. At that price point, one has to think these are not huge money makers for their respective companies, but rather a low-cost way to get you into their ecosystem. So what can you do with these? An awful lot, actually. You have access to the full suite of voice-enabled commands that each of the services offered, allowing you to get everything from news to sports scores to driving directions. You can control smart home devices, set timers, you kind of name it. This level of device is ideal for many areas of your home and office. At our house, we use them in the kids' room, as they use them for basic information lookup. You know, they're too lazy to look up on Google, I guess. We also have it set up to do announcements in the house, you know, get your lazy butt downstairs for dinner, and each of these devices will play that announcement. The kids also use them for timers and things like how long do I read for, for alarms. In general, these devices are a great entry point for those who just aren't sure they want to jump in with both feet into this space. Their lack of video cameras might also be ideal for those who are concerned about privacy, as you can't see what's going on here. They are limited, though, and you kind of have to expect that based on their low price point. You're not going to be using them for things like Skype calls, you can't see your video front door feed, and you can't watch videos on them. If you don't need any of those things, this is probably the default place for most people to start their search. All right, let's move on to the next level of device that offers all the features I spoke about in the entry level device and then add some that are going to be appealing to certain people. In general, this category is fairly broad. It's going to include devices like the Echo Show 5 from Amazon, the Google Nest Hub. There's also devices from Lenovo and Facebook that kind of fall into this space. The first difference between this and the lower price category is usually the availability of an LCD screen, often in varying sizes. This might allow you to visually see things like recipes, pictures of maps and Google searches. Some of them allow you to watch videos, perhaps from services like Amazon Video, YouTube, and more, in case you don't have 10 other devices in your house that can do that. And some offer built-in cameras for Skype calls. If you happen to have a video front doorbell, you can usually see the video feed there and even interact with your guests. Where it becomes a bit confusing is that some of these devices advertise themselves as smart alarm clocks, so the capabilities could vary as well. Why should you move towards this level of device? Well, the LCD screen is nice, but it's not for everyone. My family uses tablets or TVs to watch content, so that application never gets used. 
Seeing pictures of weather icons when you ask for weather is nice, but just hearing the forecast is enough for most people. And as I mentioned before with privacy, some people don't like the idea of a camera in the device, even though you can turn it off in many cases. If those situations apply to you, you might want to look at the lower cost device. You don't need the screen. However, I think for many applications and for many people, there's a lot of value here. We use them in the master bedroom and in the home office, two locations that are the furthest from the front door. We can control access to our home and we can see what's going on quite quickly. We also have one in the kitchen, which I find invaluable to get directions and recipes and to see pictures without having to use my hands in case they're dirty, have germs on them. If that kind of scenario sounds like you, you may wish to move up from the basic level product to this one. As well, although we're going to cover this a bit more in the description on the next category, these devices usually offer a higher grade of speaker and microphones for those who are just a little bit into audio quality. And on to the final category. I call them the premium products. Ones in this category would include the highest end product from Amazon, the HomePod from Apple, and the one that we have, the Sonos One speaker. Unlike the devices in the second category, these are not about video, but rather about sound. Most of them don't even offer an LCD screen or any form of touch. They all use voice-driven commands, very similar to the low-end products. So if you think about it, you're paying anywhere between 6 and 10 times more just for better sound. Should you? It really comes down to what are you using the speaker for? If you are asking the device questions and giving it commands as your main way of interacting with it, and you don't expect to have any content come out of it, I don't see a reason to spend more than that initial $50 for your device. However, if you want to listen to music, the value is easy to find there. The sound from these premium devices is staggering considering their size. When you use a couple of them in the same room or area, it can often replace many stereo systems. Their integration with services like Apple Music, Amazon Music, and Spotify make it easy to start playing whatever you want. And if you have multiple ones in different rooms, the music can either follow you throughout the house or play it all of them at once. Finally, they often have superior microphones, so in many cases they're able to pick up your voice from further away. Personally, we use them in the living room, in an area that we have for relaxing, I guess. I'm not even a huge audiophile, but I can truly appreciate the value they bring. If you are an audiophile, you definitely want to have these devices. So as I often like to do, here's a bit of a recap, because you kind of cover a fair amount of stuff in just a few minutes. If you're only using the devices to interact with it using voice commands, and you're not really playing music, or you don't care what the music sounds like, an entry-level device, so Echo Dot or a Google Home Mini in that range, are probably ideal. They offer a really great value, and they allow you to do what most people want to do with an assistant. If you're more into the interactive side, you wish to watch videos on them, you want to look up recipes and see the recipe, you want to see video feeds from front doorbells and cameras and those kind of things, you should look into the second tier device, like Google Nest Hub or Echo Show 5 or Echo Show whatever, is the one with a bigger screen too. There are often differences in sizes, so you may need to consider what your needs are here. If you really are gonna see video feeds and basic Skype, maybe that's a five inch screen is enough for you. If you're gonna watch videos off of an Amazon service, you may wanna go with a bigger screen. Although again, most of us have iPads or tablets, so I'm not really sure that's a concern. Finally, you have the premium audio devices, like the higher-end offering from the Echo series, the Apple HomePod, or Sonos One, and other ones, I'm sure, as well. In terms of functionality, it's more similar to the entry-level devices, but they do it with much better sound. If listening to music is at all your thing, you're going to see a lot of value here. Well, many thanks for listening to this podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. As always, we love to hear from you, good, bad, and ugly. First place to start is our Facebook page, The Internet of Things Made Simple, where you can leave messages as well as find links to material that we've done. If I'm connected to you on LinkedIn, drop me a note through that service. And if we're personally connected, drop me an old-fashioned text or an email. Talk to you soon. I'm Larry Boy Humor. Humor.